Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 32 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about Gaussian filtering for denoising. And this is a very common filter for denoising. Of course, it blurs your images a little bit. I'm going to talk about uh, what Gaussian filter is in a moment, but uh, just to show you how you may have already used it in image j or zen you just load an image again this is some artificial knowledge uh, sorry noise added to this image here again uh, in any image processing software you're going to just look for a gaussian filter uh, let's go ahead and type gauss here and there you go and when you hit apply it's going to apply the gaussian filter and there you go so image is denoised but at the same time it is actually blurred so this is how you use it in zen or in any other image processing software but how do you actually do it in python but before jumping into python let's understand what exactly is happening so for that let me jump back to my presentation here and uh, first of all talk about what is Gaussian as uh, again most of you are probably scientists so I assume you know what a Gaussian is. Gaussian is a bell curve in one dimensional in two dimension it's also uh, a hill let's say and mathematically it's represented as 1 over 2 pi sigma squared again this is the variance or standard deviation if you want to call it uh, and uh, multiplied by exponential of minus x squared plus y squared over 2 sigma squared okay so as you can see uh, sigma is something that you can or standard deviation is something you can actually define when you want to define how your uh, how your gaussian looks like now how is this going to help denoise for that let's actually look at how uh, it's actually applied first of all if you apply this in Python, you can either use OpenCV like CV2 or scikit-image. It doesn't matter. Uh, the way it's implemented or the way you define the parameters is slightly different in Gaussian blur. In OpenCV, you're defining a kernel size of uh, 3 by 3 in this example or whatever that kernel size is. I'm going to explain what a kernel is in a second. Uh, and uh, uh, you, you, uh, when it comes to scikit-image, you're going to define based on sigma. And what does that mean again? In this equation, the equation I just showed you, sorry, this one, if you change the sigma, it's going to uh, affect, again, let's look at the contour plot. It's going to affect how the shape of this, uh, of this, uh, of this uh, Gaussian looks like. So small sigma, as you can see, everything is very tight. Large sigma, everything is broad, obviously, right? So you're changing the variance, you're changing the sigma. So how, again, that basically means when we define a kernel in terms of matrix, our image is a matrix with a whole bunch of numbers and you're applying a convolution. I'll explain what uh, uh, what convolution is in a minute. Uh, but if you look at this kernel here, this is a Gaussian kernel because look at the central pixel. It has a higher value. As you go outside, it's symmetrically going down 26, 26, 26, and then diagonally 16. And then as you go, keep going out, the values decrease. And I'm dividing this entire thing by 273 because when you add all of these numbers, they all total to 273. So we don't want to change the information contained in the image. So we are normalizing it by dividing by 273. That's all a Gaussian kernel is. Once you have this kernel, what do you do? And also keep an eye on this cv2.border equal uh, constant. Okay, what does that constant border mean? Here, mode equals to constant. I'm going to explain that just in a second. First, let's actually look at uh, a few pixels. This is our image, and we want to apply Gaussian smoothing to this. So the way you apply is you pick a kernel. In this case, I'm just picking an easy kernel to understand, but this would be a Gaussian kernel that I just showed you. Okay, this would be this kernel. But for demonstration purposes, let's say my kernel is this one, minus one, zero, one, and so on. When you apply this onto this part of this image, let's say this is a three by three kernel, right? So it's applying it to this three by three region. It's literally multiplying each element. It's pixel to pixel multiplication. So it's minus one times 170, okay? Plus zero times 245, plus one times zero, plus keep going and you get a value of 394. And what does it do with that value of 394? Well, it replaces the central pixel with that value of 394, okay? So this, so in this example, this is the kernel, but with Gaussian, we have a Gaussian kernel and it's, the math looks very similar. So once it does update the central pixel, it moves to the next pixel. So this is called stride. When you just move by one, 
it's a stride equals to one. You can actually skip three pixels, for example, the stride equals to three. Okay, that may change the image depending on the type of filter you're applying. So this is a, a, a convolution. And how do you handle this border pixels? Like, for example, when it gets to this uh, eventually to the end, and if 160 is your central pixel, there is nothing to the right. How does it deal with these border pixels? So one way to deal that is add a constant value. And in this case, we are padding the image by adding new pixels with a value of zero. There are many ways you can actually extend this. One other way of doing that is just replace this uh, with the same value. Just copy 149 and make this 149. Make this pixel 160. And you define that just by doing this. I mean, if I go back to my, by saying CV2 border constant here, mode constant and what constant value do you want to add value equals to zero so this is all part of your gaussian documentation that you can get uh, if you look at it online but let's go ahead and implement it in python first okay so here is our uh, uh, tutorial from the last time where i talked about unsharp mask but right now let's go to the next tutorial uh, for gaussian and uh, sorry for not being prepared, but uh, let's go ahead and look at Gaussian. And as you can see, I have a plan on covering a few other topics. So please stay tuned. Please keep watching these uh, videos. Let's create a new document and let's call this, uh, let's call this uh, Gaussian tutorial. Okay, and let me erase everything here and let's zoom in so you can see it a bit clear okay so we're all set let me start by importing line by line okay so what i have done is created two different images okay one is uh, by adding a 25 sigma noise a gaussian noise and the other one is a salt and pepper noise okay let's see how gaussian filter works on these two types of images Okay, so I'm just importing these two using our io.imread and using our uh, image as float, uh, converting these uh, images into float. And why? Because scikit-image likes working on floating point numbers, but OpenCV, it doesn't matter for OpenCV. Uh, so let's uh, clear our screen here and then go ahead and start copying the next lines of code. Okay, so next let's actually take these lines and the way you implement, uh, ignore the, I mean, this line is basically uh, me getting a bit lazy instead of writing uh, code to include both Gaussian and salt and pepper. I just said, okay, for now I'm gonna use Gaussian image and then uh, uh, let's apply that to, uh, to this uh, Gaussian blur here. Okay, that's all I'm doing here. Again, don't want to confuse you all. Let's look at the first line here, okay? So I'm assigning a variable called Gaussian using CV2. And how are we calculating? How are we getting this Gaussian smoothing? By calling Gaussian blur from OpenCV. Okay, so it's CV2.GaussianBlur. So it pulls the Gaussian blur. And the way you implement that is the first argument typically uh, is your NumPy array or your image that you're trying to smooth. So my image is IMG right there which is nothing but my image Gaussian noise, right? The image where I added Gaussian noise. And let's actually apply a kernel of three by three. And uh, this zero, I have to look at documentation, what that zero actually does. But uh, let's, uh, again, the documentation link is right here. I'll leave that as part of the video description. And the border type, CV2 border constant. Let's actually add a constant border and let OpenCV take care of the border pixels. This is how you apply Gaussian blur in OpenCV. If you like scikit image, again, it's just uh, importing Gaussian from our skimage.filters. If you remember in the previous tutorial, we imported median from skimage.filters. Now we are importing Gaussian from skimage.filters. That's it. Okay, and then you know, the first argument is your image, and the next one is your sigma value. And the next one is uh, 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 mode equals to uh, constant. In fact, I said uh, in our previous tutorial, median, in fact, we covered unsharp mask in the previous tutorial. Median is going to be the next one. Okay, so here you go. And let's go ahead and visualize the results. And uh, the way you visualize is, again, you can use uh, PyPlot. Now I'm going to use OpenCV to visualize because it brings up the windows so we can compare things uh, easily. So that's it. So the way to implement this is uh, just 
import Gaussian from SK image filters or CV2 dot Gaussian blur either way. So let's go ahead and run this and it should open our image and let's first open the original image. Here is the original. This is just a uh, Gaussian noise as you can see and uh, let's open the CV2, open CV. So there you go. It actually cleaned it, but we could have increased our kernel size. And you can see how this got a bit blurred compared to the original image. If I increase the sigma, it would be even more blurred. So here is the scikit image. Here is the open CV. They both look very similar, very identical. So again, the lesson here is you can use either scikit image or open CV. I'm showing you both so you know that it exists in both of these. Uh, so uh, what shall we in fact let's go ahead and change the sigma to five by five so you can see how the blurring gets a bit worse when you do that and let's change our sigma to two sigma have a look at exactly the same examples and here you go this is blurred a bit more okay this image is a bit uh, more blurred but you get a bit more denoising when you do this blurring so there are other better ways of actually doing this, uh, which I'll show in a second. Now, let's actually look at salt and pepper noise and see how good the denoising is with salt and pepper. Let's go back to our default of three by three and sigma equals to one there. And let's look at it. First of all, starting with the original image. I'm not sure how cle clear it is uh, in the video, but as you can see, there is some salt and pepper noise. There are bright pixels, there are dark pixels, okay? And how did it uh, clean? Not bad, actually, if you look at OpenCV, but you can see how in the background you have a lot of these dots still there. I mean, if you look at this one nuclei right there, you see a lot of dark spots, okay? Uh, since this is a grayscale image, it's a bit difficult for us to see what's going on, but even here you can see a lot of dots. Uh, the lesson is, uh, Gaussian smoothing or any most of the smoothing uh, algorithms are probably not good to smooth salt and pepper type of noise. And why do we get salt and pepper noise in images? Well, especially if you work with older electronics or uh, electronic noise typically shows up as, as salt and pepper noise as this wild spikes, okay? So in the next tutorial, I'm gonna talk about how median filter is much better at cleaning salt and pepper noise uh, so let's uh, stay tuned for that. But uh, one other thing uh, while I remember to uh, mention here is we are converting these images into grayscale as gray equals to true because most of these filters only work on grayscale images. So how do you deal with color images? Well, there are many ways. One way is to split your color images into uh, three different channels, red, green, and blue, for example, or extract the relevant channels and apply this and merge the channels together. I covered this topic at least a couple of times, once in the OpenCV uh, tutorial, where I said, okay, you can, you can uh, uh, extract your RGB channels or BGR channels uh, from the image, do something and merge these together. So that's one way of handling with uh, handling, uh, you know, uh, uh, the constraint that you have with grayscale uh, images. Okay, so in the next tutorial, let's actually talk about median filtering and how it is a better choice for salt and pepper type of noise. Thank you very much.